Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Purge your iPhones. We'll show you how. <laughs> really? I thought we were doing something else today. Well, I uh, <laughs> I will show you some subversive software. And sandboarding has never been so much fun. It's time for iOS Today. <laughs> sandboarding. Ay, 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 OS Today time. Hello, Megan Maroney. Hello, Leo Laporte. I just can't tell you how much I like your new look. Oh. I feel like you. I have a completely new co-host on this show. Really? Yes. Huh. So that for that reason, I decided to wear epaulettes. Oh, those are quite nice. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, um, so <laughs> I said I, we were purging our iPhones. You were confused. I'm confused. It's basically the same thing. We're going to, the 10 most important iPhone Our Desert apps. Island apps. Yeah, Desert Island apps. That's good. Have you, there's a, I think it was on the BBC, it's a British, old British program called Desert Island Discs, where you were asked, if you were on a desert island, and I can't, I think it was only one or two records that you would get to bring with you and you would listen to uh, forever. And so we're going to do the 10 apps. 10 isn't enough, as we learned very quickly, that are kind of, for us, must have. Mine are, is a very eclectic list. Yeah, mine is, I, I think mine is not that surprising, but it was a good exercise to do. Yeah, it was, because, and I guess what you're saying is you could get rid of everything else, but what I found very quickly was that I uh, I use probably 15 to 20 apps every single day, mm -hmm. and then there's another set of maybe 50 apps that I use once a month or, or more, so I couldn't really get rid of all those apps. You use I need 50 them. apps a day? 20, 20 apps 20, a day, 20, probably, oh, yeah. 20, whoa. Because, uh, so what I took as the exercise, and I miss, I probably misunderstood, but is I, I left out the apps that come with your iPhone. Those are on your iPhone. You can, right. I mean, you can delete them or hide them like the Stocks app, and I have to admit, I never use the Stocks no, app. No, get rid of that. But there are Apple apps I use every day, and mm -hmm. if, I could, if I could take that out, then I can maybe boil it down to 10 apps that I really have to have. But that would include messages and mail and, of mm -hmm. course, phone and Safari. There are apps on your iPhone that are just kind of requirements. Right. Well, let me, I guess, let's let's start with me because um, because <laughs> that's my new look. I, I like your new case, okay, by the way. Okay, so Can first I, of all, wait, I have my, wait a minute, okay. let's see that. Yes, this is the pad and quill. Um, oh. They did not send me this. That's the one that comes with the coaster. <laughs> it didn't come with a coaster. We'll get to that later. Okay. This was part of my 10, uh, 10 cases for the iPhone And that's 10. the one you ended up with. And yeah, you bought this one, so you paid good money for it. Thank no, you. I didn't. Oh, I did? Yeah. Okay. Well, I bought it with my credit card, so I got the points, and then I expensed it. So <laughs> you can write it off on your taxes or whatnot. Uh, <laughs> that's most, the way mostly, we work around Mostly here. whatnot. <laughs> um, that's an interesting choice, actually, because you tried for a while the wallet cases. Yeah. I, I like the wallet cases okay, but I keep too many things in my wallet. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. So here's what I was left with after much... Um, cogitating and deleting and moving around. I like how the, I like, I kept 16. So I know we're going to get it down to 10. We'll, we'll do that. Um, but oh, let's start. you didn't so, tell me I had to delete them from the front page of my phone. Well, I think that's nice to have everything that you use. I mean, if you use 20 apps a day, then yeah. you know, you're in trouble. But okay, yeah. so th let's remove the I stock have, apps. So yeah. stock Apple apps. So that's maps, home, settings, app store, notes. Yeah, you, I mean, you four, can't, you would, five, you, yeah, you'd use, there'd be already six, 10 just seven. right there, not to mention messages and phone. Mm -hmm. So here are the ones, um, here's my my lights that I use every day to turn off and on my lights, my noon lights um, that I, I've definitely gotten used to these. They, they were a struggle at first, but this controls uh, my house lights and I use it constantly because everybody leaves all the lights on. And so I, you know, I'm in my car outside. All of like, the lights oh. in your house are attached no, to No, all of the downstairs lights. Wow, so all, yeah, and we have a bunch of, um, you know, the canister lights. And so this is very... That's, handy for me because I'm thing. sitting in the car and I'm like, oh, everybody left the lights. No, on. in so fact, I I, that's the last thing I did up. as I left the house is I turned mm -hmm. off all the lights by hand. But I, but see, oh, I have Hue lights in my office and I, when I walk in, they come on. And I, so I have a motion sensor. Yeah. So these, I, that eliminates the app, although I, you could use the app. 
These have a motion sensor in the nighttime, which is really nice, so mm -hmm. that if you go down in the middle of the night to get a glass of water, it just little dim lights come oh, on. Oh, so that's you don't trip over it, it knows not to blind you. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And it has vacation mode too, so that it, it remembers what I'm doing, and then when I'm on vacation, it does it. So, um, home, Snapchat. I can't get rid of the Snapchat. I don't snap a lot, but I can't get enough of the filters because I'm a filtery kind of person. Oh. Uh. See how much better I look oh, with that? You, and you have a little ball of yarn. You're a kitty cat with a ball of yarn instead <laughs> yeah. of a microphone. So that's, that's essential. That looking. I use every single day. Do you and, really? Yeah, I'm going to send that to is my that, daughter. Is That's how you stay in touch with your kids? Uh, just you my, the, the only the 13-year-old. I mean, only the 14-year-old has. The 12-year-olds don't have Snapchat no, yet. Not not till next year. Not, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, their birthdays are in April. Um, <laughs> Do you, is, that your, is that their birthday present? Now Snapchat. you can go on Snapchat. Yeah. So um, I've been experimenting with the Newton calendar app, which I really like. Well, let me see um, that. I never heard of that. So is um, it like a Newton? It, Newton. I use a Newton for email. So um, it's oh, a, it's, it's nothing a to do with the Apple Newton. No. Oh, mm -hmm. um, that somebody should write that app. We should have an Apple Newton app, and then you could have your Newton calendar. Would actually be you. You have to pull out your stylus, and mm -hmm. you'd write lunch, and it would say farm. It'd be great. I would. So I like this because it has different count. Like I don't have an art club meeting at 10 a.m. That's actually my mom. Um, oh, but so, her calendar shared with you. Yes. That's nice. So that I can know where they are. Does this happen to you if you use Google Calendar or another calendar app? Like everything from your Apple calendar just appears. Do you ever have that where it's like, why is that in there four times? That I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, Does that ever nice. happen to you? No. Hmm. Periodontist huh. on Friday. So you have you have uh, synced this with both your Apple calendar and your Google calendar. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's pretty similar. Are you going to show me all 10 and then I show you all 10? Is that how we yeah, want to do this? Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. Okay. Because that's the, um, otherwise I won't get to talk at all. We know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> I Let's just use this as the conch. <laughs> the, this, the, the, the talking when hub, I, when the talking pod. When my hand is on it, I get to speak. Okay. I'll just keep my hand here all the time. Yeah, I'm going to show you all 10. Hipstamatic. I use that pretty regularly too. Um, that's just a filter for taking really cool pictures. Um, here, smile. Um, and it, and it, as opposed to like me going through a bunch of different filters, like it picks the best one. Which oh, that was really nice. That's wasn't the good-looking filter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I could change the filter here, but I really like this, and it keeps all my photos there. Do you, um, so most of your pictures you take with Hipstamatic? I take a lot of them with Hipstamatic. Mm. If, you know, if it's just like my well, That's old school. That's very old school. Yeah. Literally, this is not, yeah, actually. It is. <laughs> that's I like it. Yeah. Um, if it's like something that I feel like he's just sitting at the piano, it might like look arty if I used to. This program originally was designed to kind of duplicate Lomo photography. Hip, the Hipstamatic oh, was like a, yeah. to duplicate a light leak, like a bad <laughs> cheap camera. But I guess now it's really more of like a lot of filters, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm probably like showing my age by thinking that like those kind of filters are still cool. <laughs> hipster. But I do. You're a hipster. Um, you have two now on uh, on your top 10 are taking pictures of yourself. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Just a word of warning. No, Snapchat is communicating with my 14-year-old daughter. You got to use all the tools that you have. It's true. It's go, go to the kids where they are. Go where they are. Um, Which is when they leave immediately. <laughs> That's why the, the Facebook lost 2 million under 25 users last year mm -hmm. because mom and dad were there. It's like, right. we're getting out of here. Uh, Google Photos. I uh, also use Gotta be love in the top it. 10, yeah, that's not, it? Yeah. Um, yeah. But do you use it more than Apple Photos? Oh, <laughs> that's terrifying. This is a Snapchat photo that it's a filter that makes you frown i tried so hard to smile in this photo and it really had to distort your face to turn that yeah. smile upside down i also love this is in my google google photos and like google sees this and it's ai is trying to figure out what to do what with the it hell is this? <laughs> like what what are those is uh just out of curiosity are those beads actual size uh yeah i okay. think those are not filtered just um, your face mm -hmm. um that's quite a look yeah i want to get that look uh, so photos? I have Spotify and, but, yeah, but let me, but, So you, I noticed you have Google Photos and Apple Photos next to each other. So really. So here, let me tell you what I have here. I have all the listening, all the listening oh, and you're, Twitter. Oh, you're organized. All the photos. Yeah. All like the productivity and then other. 
that's what I have. So nice. these are actually my least used. I went from least used. I, I even ignored the home app, but like that's how you control your home pod and that kind of thing. So oh, I should really put a different song on that. Kendrick Lamar, he's going to do some cursing. <laughs> that's a cursing song. That's actually what it's called. The cursing song. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I, I do use both of them. But you're going to pick of the 10, you're going to say Google Photos would be the, the, the in the top 10. Yes. And I also use Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah, I and that's that merely too. because I I got we just we discussed this before. I'm locked into a year of paid Spotify because of my New York Times subscription that I so I have both. Yeah. And that's my podcast app of choice, Pocket Casts. Love it. Mm, gosh, um, you know, now you're think making me think all these apps I left off the list. That's an important one, Pocket mm -hmm. Casts. Yeah. Well, yeah, I use it. These are the ones that I use every day. Yeah. And here's what I've got down here in my dock. These are my communication apps down here. So HipChat, that's how you communicate with me and I communicate with you. And that's how Jason and I communicate. Well, that's our other. kind of corporate our, communication yeah, so tool, that's so. Uh, that. And then this is how sometimes you also communicate with me. That's Messages. how I get all the Bitmojis from you. Yeah. Newton email. That's the email app I have that to I use. I have to try this. I'm not even familiar it. with this. Newton um, it's got a lot of really great features. I've talked about them before. And then Cup Phone. So it's it's have you, roughly organized. I must have missed that show. Sometimes. I don't remember the Newton some, stuff. Uh, maybe I talked about it on the screensavers. Yeah. I'll I've have to try it. About it. Why before. do you like Newton Mail? Um, I like it has customizable swipe features. So it's even more like I can say I want to um, see this again in three hours. Oh, I want nice. to um, <clears throat> see it again tomorrow. You can give a message a timeout. No. Yes. Yes. Um, I like the, you can see the sender, more sender information. You click the sender and it has their website and any other oh, information. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I just like a, that it's on, it works similarly on my Mac. My, it's a um, desktop as well. Yes. Okay. I use it on the, I like the keyboard shortcuts in the desktop. I'm going to have to try it. And I like what it looks like. Don't show my screen because I don't know what is in my email. Um, I think that's. It's got a pretty, uh, pr it looks prettier than Apple Mail. I just use the Apple so. Mail app. Yeah. Uh, I, for a long time, I didn't, uh, but I I've come to I've come to appreciate Apple's Mail app, and it has the swipe. Everything now has swipe. Yeah, but, but this not, is more customizable. Not a you can show hour. my screen. Can we show it now. now? Okay. Yeah. There's there's nothing. She's taking all the sexy stuff out. <laughs> yes. That's Here's that's nice looking. Okay, let's see the swipe you. So I can um, that pops up. I can say ah, later two hours. I, I can they pick a date. That. Okay. Day after Saturday. I've customized yeah. all of these. Yeah. So. Um, you know, and then what's if swipe right is get rid of? Um, yes, yeah, swipe right is. I almost gave away all. Swipe right, a little right is archive. Yeah, and all the way right delete. is delete. And yeah. what you know with inbox for um, Google, they don't give you a delete on the swipe. Yeah, everything's it's just archive. archive, and that's such a mess because <clears> you fill up your email. So that's why I gave up inbox. Their their theory, this you know, it's funny because they really have a, re a reason for that is mm -hmm. that you shouldn't delete email. We're going to give you, this was when Google first came out with Gmail. We're going to give you so much storage, you'll just keep everything. If you archive it, you won't see it, but it'll still be searchable. And that's mm -hmm. the point, I guess, is that, oh, what was that thing Leo sent me two years ago? Mm -hmm. That way you have it all. But I, yeah, I enter, you, you're you an inbox zero type. You're, yeah. You're well, like, you know, recently when I was uh, mentioning that we had done that interview 10 years ago with someone. You in the found news, it. I found a conversation that I had with. Perfect example. Yes. With uh, it was from 2008. Because we were talking on one of the other shows about this person. I I don't remember. It was Dana Lesh. Dana the, Lesh, that's the right. The NRA representative who was, and I was like, oh my gosh, she sounds familiar. I think we interviewed her we on did. Jumping Monkeys, and I we did looked it up, and we did. Yeah, Jumping yeah. Monkeys episode 23 from 2008. She was a mommy blogger back before she's doing what she's doing a now. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. And a homeschooler as our guest. Yeah. are today yeah. visiting. I think that's why we interviewed Yes, him. about yeah. te tech and homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I found that from 2008. See, that's why you want to save everything. Google's idea is to treat your email as a database of everything, and then you want to have it be searchable, so you wouldn't want to delete stuff from your database. On the other hand, you know, you don't like messes, even well, if you can't was, see the mess. Well, that thing I just deleted was a notification of a hip chat that you sent. There me. is plenty of stuff that you yeah, don't. So like There's that's no already saved in hip chat. I yeah. don't need that. Um, so I don't <clears> even know why I get alerts from hip chat. So I think that yeah. is it. And I like um, the app that I use the most uh, is Twitter. And that's right where my thumb is. So I think that's a little tip that I, um, 
I always use whatever app you find that you are always needing. Just I right did make this easier on myself by recently. <gasps> Look at your mess, Leo. <laughs> Oh my gosh, turn off those badge notifications. They're making me anxious just looking at them. <laughs> I recently did something that was making, got rid of something that was making me anxious. I deleted Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I didn't want WhatsApp. I didn't want any Facebook apps on my phone because I, I just, I don't, I don't want to participate in their ecosystem. And by the way, I didn't delete them like out I'll of my life because I can go on the desktop and, and look at them. But I just found that I was getting up at night and looking at Facebook mm -hmm. or Twitter, and it was just a bad idea. Okay, so was that it, or was it the data they were taking from your mobile phone that you? Were well, in the case of Facebook, I was more con I was also concerned about this uh, uh, information that I might be leaking to Facebook. Uh, so it was it was twofold, you know. And as it as it happens, it simplified my life, but it also simplified this list because that I would have had Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, would have taken three of these limited. 10 slots so i noticed you had twitter but you didn't have facebook in there do you I don't use have it the, i don't have the facebook app on my phone i took that off long ago i do have instagram but i i have to swipe to get it so it's that's, there yeah um, that's a good idea and so yeah these are all the Bury other it a little bit. Yeah, yeah i definitely have other apps <clears throat> that i use on a not so daily basis or i have this folder here need to try like these are apps that i've downloaded that i want to try test out and use oh, so you're very that. organized um yeah i am how many pages do you have total? Oh, uh, it looks like six. Let's yeah. see. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears> see, I find it problematic to have too many pages. What? By the way, is that a gorilla wallpaper you have there? That That's is... my dog, Gilbert. Oh, That's I just saw the nose. <laughs> <clears throat> that is a large nose. It is. It's better That's a nose the size with, of Leo. a plum. <laughs> a nice, ripe, slightly moist, mm -hmm. cold plum. All right, my top 10. You okay. went through that so fast. Um, well, uh, I might take a little well, longer because I can like. Take as long as you want, to but you got to promise me that you're going to turn off those badge notifications. No, I like them. Really? I'll tell you why. Okay. Did, I do something else that you probably hate. I have folders on my front page. Yeah, I don't like that either. Because I found, I, I just, like I said, I have more than 150 apps on here, but I found that I really, there is about, there's a ton of them I use all the time. Mm hmm. So the and the and you're gonna really hate this. The number one and number two app aren't on my first page. What? They're hidden back on page three. I only have three pages. Why? Because this is the last page is my kind of tools page. Ah. And uh, I also put them back here because I have this kind of crazy notion. Well, it'll make it a little bit more secure. If so, people don't see the right up front when I turn on my phone that I have LastPass and Authy running. These are kind of, to me, must-have apps on every device. LastPass is my password vault. And we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. and you can have many oh. of them. I love how it works with Face ID yeah, now. Me Isn't too. that great? Uh, except in the middle of the night when you're trying to log into a site and, it, and your face is all squenched up and it doesn't recognize you. But this simplifies my login considerably, and I generate all my passwords with LastPass. Uh, that way, I don't use the same password over and over again, and I don't uh, have easy to memorize passwords. I have hard to memorize passwords because LastPass keeps track of all of those. Uh, we should mention they're going to be a sponsor. Oh, uh, they've, we've signed a deal with them. I'm thrilled about that. Oh, great! Yeah, I um, I use them too, but I don't I don't use the app that often, like the app itself. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you why. Uh, it, uh, on the uh, you're right on on Android I don't but on iPhone it doesn't do automatic fill in as mm -hmm. it does on Android so I have to if I'm logging into a site or an app and by the way this works for apps but you still have to go back to LastPass copy it it's a lot easier now than it used to be because of the uh, the iPhone swipe mm -hmm. you can you can be in an app for login and then swipe back to LastPass which is really handy but doesn't it usually bring up LastPass for you like no. you don't have to go to the app oh yeah oh well Maybe I I'm... find I have to yeah. the other thing I use all the time is Authy and we've talked about two-factor you should always have two-factor on everything you do Authy is uh the way I do that and you can see these are all the accounts I have two-factor on quite a few and two-factor means in, in addition to a password I'll have to give a six-digit token code and that has to come from this app so those two apps are my kind of secure my stuff apps. They're so important. I'm putting them top of the list. And, and I do use those every day. Let me go back to my front page, though. Here's one of the reasons I want a badge on there. Only Apple's calendar can have a date badge. Apple, you know, date and time <clears throat> can only be displayed by the Apple apps. They're the only apps that allow that. So your clock app shows the time. 
And if you had the Apple Calendar, it'd show the date. So the way other apps get around, a lot of calendar apps get around that, is with the badge. So that's this is the 27th. That's oh. why I, I have a badge that says 27. It doesn't mean I have 27 appointments. This is the <laughs> calendar app I use. It's called Fantastical. I use it on the desktop and on uh, uh, all my dev all iOS devices for a few reasons. Uh, I like the I like the calendaring. I like the way it works. You see, there's a by month. Uh, here's by week. It also gives me an agenda. But the best thing about this is it's really easy to enter stuff because you don't have to fill in fields. Lunch with Megan, 12 o'clock slash personal at Della Fattoria. Oh, nice. And so what it does is it interprets. Oops, it's still interpreting, so I should probably stop. It's It interprets what I said and turns it into 12 o'clock. Uh, it didn't get the uh, it did get the location at Della Fattoria. I I might have to actually fill in yeah the address, but it did get the location slash personal supposedly puts it in my personal. It did, so you see it has artificial. What do you call that? Natural language. It understands English, and so I don't want to have lunch with you. So I'm going to discard <laughs> that event. Okay. So it makes it very easy. And there's another reason I do that, and that's another app that I use, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, so that's fantastic, Cal. It's not free from the, uh, I think it's the Icon Factory, but it's really a great calendar app, and I use it uh, on, on everything. And, and one of the, yeah, there it is, uh, FlexiBits, that's who does it, $5. And then I think it's a little more expensive for the desktop, but it also gives you great notifications. I have it in my notifications uh, drawer. You know, you have that, uh, the drawer of, um, what do you call that? shortcuts or something i don't know so there it is fantastic how oh, this is another way to judge widget. by the way how important your apps are if you right. give them space widgets if you give them widgets and i do indeed give fantastic how widgets i also give drafts pride of place i talked about drafts before this is the weirdest program on the list but drafts is really handy especially if you're an apple watch user uh, it works on all iOS, so it's iPad, watch, and uh, and iPhone. I use it on my watch. I have a, a drafts complication. You see it right here. Don't forget to bring in cheese and crackers for our cocktail party tonight. With Megan. With Megan. <laughs> she, she, it actually saw that. I'm going to say done. Now, that didn't process it. <clears throat> it just put it in a trusted inbox. And the inbox shows up uh, in drafts here and here and then later i can by the way and i can add stuff by typing as well it's a the idea is you do the text entry quick and easy and it all ends up in your inbox okay and then if i call this back up i can process it by sliding over here and sending it to my to-do list my shopping i have a whole bunch of things twitter google plus wordpress a whole bunch of places i can send it so in this case, I sent it to Fantastical, mm. and it will Fantastical will process it. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And and make it into an appointment. So it's a very quick way. For instance, to add appointments, you add them on your watch. You don't actually then pull up the calendar app. You just trust that it's in an inbox. And once a day, you go into drafts and you process it. Oh, I got to get the Tech Guy Labs cert. Patrick's, I mean uh, Russell's been bothering me, so I'm going to put that in my reminder app. Done. It's in my reminder app. By the way, reminders is one of the Apple apps I, I didn't include on this list because it comes with Apple, but it is, you see, a top row app because that's my to-do list. That's everything. And and, and uh, um, it really is important to for me. I have a number of different uh, categories. I have shopping to do, family recommendations or what people tell, tell me to read or watch, my suggestions for things I want to read or watch. I'm always doing that. Somebody will say, oh, you got to see the e Homeland. Add, add Homeland to my read and watch list. And now it's in my inbox. And then tonight I'll process it and I will. Okay, so, so that's I, drafts. I had drafts on my homepage since you mentioned it. It was yeah. there waiting for me to enter all my important thoughts, and I never used it. Yeah, you have. It's not something, first of all, it's not intuitive. Right. Because you say, well, I already have everything I use has data entry. I mean, that's just normal. So it, it's one of those things you have to figure out first how you might use it. And then, second, you have to get in the habit of using it. 
what I needed was some way I make commitments. Uh, we all do in our mm -hmm. lives all the time. And a commitment, mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep your commitments, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. that makes life better. My problem is I would make commitments and forget. Mm -hmm. I forget I told you I would bring that in. I would forget, you know. And so I needed a system where I would make the commitment. I would record it immediately on my Apple Watch. And then it would be stored in a place that was trustworthy, was safe, that I could later process it and put it in the most appropriate place. You can use it to send texts. You could use it to send emails. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you might say, well, yeah, but you could do that with Siri. But the problem with that is... You have to think about what app you want to use. You have to launch that proper app or tell Siri the right thing. With drafts, you just dump it out of your mind. It's a getting things done um, uh, mechanism. You just dump it out of your mind into a safe place to be stored, and then I can process it intelligently later in a very fast and efficient way. So you're right. I understand. And I, Even when we talked about it, it was one of my app caps about a couple of months ago. It probably was baffling to people and if you haven't you have to use it every day to really kind of get and but once you get in the habit of anytime i make a commitment or i a lot of times you remember something like oh god i keep forgetting to clean the garage or i have to change that light bulb you think of it at a completely inopportune moment and then it goes by and then the times that you could get the the light bulb to change the light bulb so you want to put it in drafts and then i use reminders with its location based pinging as well as a way to say, what, you know, next time you're at the hardware store, don't forget to pick up light bulbs, things like that. Right. I use that all the time. And reminders I didn't put in my first page either because I mostly just use my Apple Watch yeah. or Siri. Remind yeah. me when I get to Target to buy toilet paper. I have it there because it's it's more than a to-do list. It's a, it's a reminder. The other, another app here, and by the way, I didn't include that in my top 10 only because I, I'm not putting Apple apps in there. And I'll show you at the end which Apple apps I have mm -hmm. to have. Last week's app cap full uh, contact, the uh, you go back and watch the app cap if you want to know more about it. But it's, to me, better than Apple's contact manager. It pulls my contacts from everywhere. Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, of course, Apple's contact list, my Google contact list. It merges duplicates. It adds pictures. It's really fantastic. And I showed you uh, also it scans business cards. And I can get rid of, John has been very kindly Every time somebody gives me a business card, I didn't even know this, I'll throw it on my desk. And John's been collecting them. He gave me, you found the book I saw. He gave me, a, he's been collecting every business card I got. Now I'm going to go through and take pictures of them and add them to my uh, contacts. So full contact is a great solution. That's not free. You pay depending on how many things you want it to do. Uh, but it's a really nice app. So that is on my, absolutely on my list. Another uh, pick uh, that I had mentioned uh as an app cap, that's also, I think, you know, my picks are kind of quirky. They come from maybe somebody who's been computing for too long. You know, not part of the digital generation. Is Devon Think. Devon Think is kind of like an email for stuff you want to keep track of, notes, so forth. So I have, it's it looks like email. Uh, this is the top level. I'll go to research. There's an inbox. There's tags. There's things I want to research. There's I can paste in there notes. I can type in notes. I can paste in links. Um, I have a to-do list. I have a travel is probably the one I use the most. So upcoming trips, for instance, I know we're going to go to Japan in uh, April. So I have been putting links in there, weather information, an overview. I put in tickets, uh, PDFs, bookings. I have a diary that shows us day by day what we're going to be doing. And then when I get to these places, this is what we're scheduled to do. I can now edit it and add more. And this becomes a travel diary. So I don't know exactly how to describe Devon Think. Uh, writers might use it to take notes for a project they're working on. It's kind of, it's a, it's a note-taking app, but it's structured a little bit more perhaps like email. I don't, I don't know how to characterize it. I've been looking for a long time for something like this and I ended up using Dev and Think. Now one of the reasons I like this also is it it's a desktop application. That's mostly where you would work on this on your Mac. Uh, but then uh, that synchronizes, it saves it to uh, Dropbox encrypted and it synchronizes and they have an iOS version for both uh, iPad and email. So here's for instance, we're, we're doing a little, Lisa and I are doing a little daydreaming about where we might wanna retire and so that's in our retirement group. And I have the different locations we're thinking about. This is years away. Don't get okay. freaked out. Do you need to add a note in there? Wait till my kids get through college? <laughs> Wait till 
Megan's kids get through college. Yeah, my yeah. kids, yeah. <laughs> your kids are your kids. <laughs> so, I mean, Michael, too. Yeah, Michael, too. Yeah, we're not retiring. No, we're not retiring yet. Now, but this is nice because it's very easy to use on the phone, but you can all, you'll can you also get it on your um, on your uh, desktop and on your... And they're different apps, by the way. You have to pay a little extra. But I, I just find this very handy uh, for... Uh, like, here's the uh, overview, and I can paste in images and things like that. So... I, I just find this a very handy way for me. What, how would you describe that to keep track of stuff I'm working on, I guess? Is it, it's not like a mind mapper. It's not no, mind it's mapper. very primitive. I mean, it's re it really is an old school application. It's a hierarchical database that looks a lot like email. So you have folders. There are various levels for of, of the desktop application. At the highest level, the Devin Think Pro Office is $149. It has some additional features. That's the one I use. Like uh, you can OCR, PDFs, things mm -hmm. like that. It's really designed for you to, to uh, projects, do projects research, I guess, would be the best thing. It's, a, it's something that not everybody will want. It's kind of old school, but I definitely use it. Now, another thing I use all the time because I have an Android phone, and you're now a little fam more familiar with this, is Hangouts. Uh, Hangouts is Google's messaging app. And the only reason I have it on here is uh, it's the one messaging app I have that works on everything. So it works on Android, it works on Windows, it works on Linux, it works on Mac OS, it works on iOS. So if somebody messages me, you know, I use, I love messages, but it doesn't work across platform, right? So if somebody messages me on my main phone number, it'll show up in Hangouts. So that has to be on my phone because it's it's one way I can keep track of people. And one of the things I like about it, like Apple's messages, is I can use it on the desktop as well. So sometimes if I get in long conversations, instead of typing on my phone, which I hate to do, I will go to the desktop and start typing mm. on the screen. Google's Hangouts, that's unique to me, frankly. I, that's only because I use an Android device. Yeah, uh, I mean, messages will work with people with Android phones, but it's pr a problem when you go back and forth between yeah. Android and iOS and then you're lost. I use, I use both. Uh, and people who know me, like my family, will sometimes use send a message to both my message, my Apple phone number and my Google Voice number. That way, it gets to both of them, and then they can't. I'm not. Don't do that. Uh, I already have like ten email addresses over the years. It's hard to reach me, and I make it that way on purpose. <laughs> I, I really debated this. This is a sponsor, and I tried to keep sponsors out of this list because I don't. I I, I don't want to. I don't know. I. But I, got, I can't live without my Audible, so I had to put it in here. This is an app that I literally launch every single day. These are books that I'm, you know, I have a lot of books. This is, let's show you what's on my device. These are books that I actually have downloaded on my device. Because sometimes I'm in the mood to listen to a little Zen Alan Watts, sometimes a little sci-fi William Gibson. Have you listened to Lincoln and the Bardo? L yes, Marco and I talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my favorite book of all time. Hi. Highly recommended, especially the Audible version of it. As as Marco listened with your boys, your mm -hmm. 12-year-olds, and they loved it. Yeah. Cl wonderful book. Here's the complete... This is the complete George Smiley radio dramas from the BBC. Yeah. Just fantastic stuff. So that's my audio entertainment. You might say, but Leo, where's your music? Well, I do have music. And, and it really, to be fair, I should probably mention all the music apps, including Apple Music and my Sonos app and my Google Play Music and Pandora and everything. What's that yellow one? This one down here? No, the, the, the yellow. Genius? Yeah. Rap Genius. Oh, so that's you can for tell the lyrics. Kendrick Lamar is saying. Can I ever remember what those guys are saying? I'm not good with lyrics. <laughs> uh, this is something, though, that you may not know about. It's called Vox, V O X. Oh. It's an alternative player for Apple's Macintosh and iOS. It, If you pay for the Loop Library, it does the same thing as Apple's Music Match. You can upload all your songs to it. Actually, it doesn't really do the math matching it's just a database so my entire library of of downloaded music is on here and i can listen um it is a it's a it's a very nice very capable player but i also uh you know have all my songs on here so i find this to be um uh a, a really nice app it is called it is an unusual app if you're if you don't if you're not crazy about itunes i think probably this should be in here at least you should take a look at Vox. And I think there's a free trial on the desktop anyway, not obviously on iOS. But once you've got it on the desktop, you want it on iOS as well. And now my music library is everywhere. You see, though, it's not fair for me to say that's one That's one of 10, but there's many. I use a lot of music apps. Similarly, I didn't 
until I, I didn't include any nav apps in here. Yeah, I just have maps. I use them all. I, mm. Google Maps as much as Apple Maps, but I didn't include that in here. <clears throat> my last is, of course, Google Photos. And you can see it's sitting right next to my Apple Photos. But I always put Google Photos on every device because of the backup. Uh, I just, it's one more place to store my photos. They have free unlimited backup of your, of your, um, uh, all your photos. And when I take a photo, it'll automatically be uploaded to Google Photos and be available on all my devices. So I, it's, I don't, maybe don't refer to it, don't open it a lot, maybe. But ever, I know every picture I've ever taken since 1999 is in there. I have 60,000, 70,000 images in there. They're all in there. They're categorized. I can search. So I don't have to, you know, do a lot of foldering and stuff like that. Uh, and most important to me, when I take a picture on any of my phones, and I use a lot of different phones, uh, including the iPhone, it'll immediately upload there and it's backed up. So that's really important to me. I didn't include, I'll give you some bonus programs okay. real quick. Wait, I have a question before you move on from music. Why isn't Apple Music in the music folder? Um, you know, I, I blew it with Apple Music. I never joined. When I got the HomePod, I had to join. It's the only thing it really works with, with voice anyway. And I signed up for the family membership, and here's where I blew it. I told my kids. So now all of the music. So now I can't quit. Uh, I want to quit. Yeah. I don't like Apple Music. I think it's terrible, frankly. I don't like the interface. I, I'm not interested in Beats, the radio station. I only got it so I could use the HomePod. And then once I told the kids now, I have to do the family plan for the rest of my life. So it's on there, but it really doesn't, it shouldn't be on there. Um, my, uh, truthfully, uh, probably Sonos is the, is the app that should be on the front. That's the one I probably use most because I, when I listen at home, I'm often listening on Sonos. Do you have to use the Sonos app? You can't talk to your Sonos. You can. I have, I have a way to talk to my Sonos, but. Uh, Does it listen or are you just talking to it? it I talk to it <laughs> okay. and it listens. Okay. And then Spotify, I'm having the same problem because I added Spotify for some other reason. I wanted to show the HomePod using Spotify, and now I have a membership to that. But I'm not telling my kids. Don't tell them. I'm not telling my kids. Uh, Amazon Shopping has to be on that list, but it couldn't be. Texture, another sponsor, of course, that's on there. HipChat, you mentioned. We use HipChat to communicate at work, so I have to keep that running. I've mentioned this once before as an app cap, Elevate. I'm trying to keep from going senile. Mm -hmm. You're I'm trying doing a good to keep, job so far. I'm trying to keep from going senile. Did I mention that I'm trying to keep from being going senile? <laughs> yep. So I use this as brain training. And I do my brain training every single day religiously because I read an article that said uh, the best way to avoid uh, senescence, senility, is to um, practice speed drills. It's not, it's not, it's, you know, I do crossword puzzles and Sudoku and all that stuff trying to keep my brain going. But the speed is important. And, and so this program is my favorite brain trainer, Elevate. It's not free. It's $99 a year. But it does it rewards you for speedy answers. So it encourages me. And it, does, uh, it has t uh, games in every possible area. Writing, listening. I mentioned this before. I think speaking, reading, math. I just want to point out I am elite in writing. I'm elite in math. The kids call it leet. I'm leet. I'm spurt in speaking and reading. They don't probably call it spurt. I don't know even what that is. Expert. Oh, spurt. Yeah, spurt, you should right? start that. The kids, they call it spurt, and I'm vanced in listening. <laughs> listening, what a surprise. My worst. But that's why I work on it. Mm -hmm. I work on it. Mm -hmm. Good. So, yeah. uh, and it, it gives you, uh, it gives you uh, information about how you've performed, how much time you spent. I've spent eight hours playing these silly games. So that's on there. Duolingo's on there because I'm trying to learn Japanese before we go. Sonos. But my top 10, again, I'll just run through it. LastPass, Authy, Fantastical, Full Contact, Drafts, Devon Think, Hangouts, Audible, Vox, and Google Photos. And then if you include the Apple product programs, messages, mail, reminders, music, phone, camera, Safari, photos, I use all of those all the time too. So Google Photos is really our only one that we both... The only one? Yeah. But I think this is really important because it shows that really uh, this is a very personal device mm -hmm. and you can use it as it came out of the box with just the, you know, the stuff that's on the front page that Apple put there. And I think probably 50, 60, 70% of people just do that. Mm -hmm. They just use what's on there. But if you really use it as a tool, you end up making it your own. And, and that makes sense. Ours are very different. Mm -hmm. 
because and I you, you see my some of my stuff is kind of idiosyncratic like drafts and Devin think because that I've after many years we've been doing this a long time now 10 years using an iPhone I've finally come up with a workflow that suits uh, my, the way I think and do you use 3D Touch at all on any of those apps? Is that something part of your head? I always forget. Do you yeah, forget? Me, no, yeah, I do. I mean, when I was doing this, I was looking at all of them and reminding myself, like, with notes, you know, create a new note, that kind of thing. There are some good 3D Touch in Apple Music. Um, and well, let's see. some of my stuff does. I didn't know that. Oh, there is <laughs> Apple Music Search. Devin Think has a Search Global Inbox New Note New Media. That's nice. That's handy. Drafts, I'm sure. Yeah, Drafts pulls up the same widget that you get on the uh, widget mm -hmm. screen, which so allows you to... So does Pocket Cast. Yeah. The Pocket I should have put nice. Pocket Cast in there, too, because I actually do use that all the time. Mm -hmm. Darn it. I know. it's You forget. And also, you know, you can see, like, these are my Siri app suggestions. So these are actually what I really use, which is Poshmark, Amazon. Oh. So I don't have Poshmark or Amazon there because that's just shopping I don't want to have those on my front page either because I, I really don't need my, to buy more stuff. My Siri app suggestions. Yeah. So it's like I there are th apps that I use pretty often that I specifically move off my front page because I would like to use them less. I'm going to uh, Look, I have a draft widget. I'm my myself, my my uh, you know, trying to live my best life. My best life wants to use drafts. I know that it would be part of living my best life. So, here's what Siri app suggestions says. It's not any of the apps that I mentioned. Notes <laughs> which I've actually stopped using. Mm. I'll show you what I use instead of Apple's notes. Plume and Eero are my two network because I'm always checking. The, what's wrong with the network? Yeah, Eero, I think I might move to the front because I have been using it lately as sort of a um, a punishment tool, like disconnecting yeah. my kids' devices. Yeah. We should probably say that Eero is one of our sponsors. Yes, we love them. That's very handy. But you can use that with your Amazon Echo. You can just say this. Yeah, I, have yeah. To, I haven't set that up. I need to set that up. Photos is on there. I didn't mention, and I, I actually realized I didn't mention that, that instead of Apple's Notes, uh, I use, but see, not everybody would know about this or even be able to use it, something called a DS Note, which is a Synology. I replaced Evernote. People might say, why isn't Evernote on your list? Yeah, Evernote's great. I replaced it with DevonSync and... For basic notes, DS Note, which is basically an Evernote clone, but it's instead of being stored on the Evernote server, it's stored on my Synology network attached storage device. So, but that's not something you'd have to have a Synology to be able to use that. But uh, we didn't mention really note taking apps. Do you have a note taking app that you use? I use Notes, yeah, um, but I don't use Evernote or anything like that. Um, notes I is use sufficient. my bullet. But my bullet, bullet journal, journal is really handy. I can't yeah. scan things into it, and I if I lose it, then my life is essentially over. Well, and and drafts for me has I can I uh, use drafts to take notes, and then I will send it to whatever note taking app. Mm -hmm. That's much I more want, efficient, in, including notes, of course. But yeah, so. I'll just tell my Apple Watch like remind me in two hours, and then hopefully in two hours I will be somewhere where I can write it in my bullet journal. Yeah. All right, so let's move on to our HomePod friend. Um, first of all, I want to, um, maybe you know the answer to this. I somehow got some dirt on my HomePod. Where's the best place That's why to I got the it? black one. <laughs> I know. Look, at, Kevin, can you take a look at oh, this? Oh, you place? got a, sh a schmudge on I the got, front. I got some schmutz on there. Is oh, that, that's um, terrible. How do I clean that off? That's, um, that's my question to you out there. Or you, Leo. Um, I don't know. I think it was just from bringing it here. I stuck it in the trunk of my car. Yeah. I should have wrapped it up nicely. I'm, wow, that's a bummer. Well, it I can really put spoils it. it. <laughs> it's the, I'll put it to the back. I'll wash it off. I'm sure someone will send me a tip. Okay, so last week we discussed the rings that the HomePod was sh you know, appearing on wood tables of yeah. my own. Yeah. Um, and I just put it on a stack of books. Burke heard my call and he burked something for me. It's, Good Lord. It is a weight. That will never have rings on it. Um, but it is also, he's used two microphone stands, I guess. He burked them together. And hey, That Siri. is really perfect. Hey, Siri. Play Bye Bye Birdie. Really? You're listening to Bye Bye Birdie these days? Okay. Here's the album, Bye Bye Birdie, original film soundtrack. We'll turn it up. Various artists. Yes. <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> bye, bye, okay. Also, 
though. So that's one So option. are we getting this back? Because I think this is made from stuff in the studio. Yeah, I don't know. You got to talk to Burke about that. <laughs> we have extra. That's extra? Okay. Okay. It sounds different. Does it, it does. Sound different? I think it sounds better on the table. It sounds a lot. That you don't get the bass. Yeah. Why are you listening to that? Uh, Milo is trying out for Bye Bye Birdie. Oh, he's trying out? Are they doing it at the Cinnabar. school? Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. fun. No, it's Cinnabar. The it's local Cinnabar. Theater. Yeah. Oh, does he want to be uh, Conrad Birdie, the Elvis clone? No, he wants a smaller part. He has a big part now, and it's a lot of line learning. It's too much work. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'll let you know next week. He finds out callbacks. This might this work week. better. This is we've talked about this last week. Pat and Quill sent me this. They sent um, you the coaster. The 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 home pod coaster. It feels good. It's nice. And Actually, I have to take it back because it. I should have brought my shoe coasters that I get from the shoe have. company. This is much nicer. They've stitched it. There's actually mm -hmm. a, a. It looks like a felt uh, backing on it. Yeah, it's that'll soft. Well, I guess it's leather too, but it'll protect your furniture. That's right. really nice. Like I feel like the the Burke thing, the Burke cake stand, feels like it would maybe scratch up the wood too. But let's see. Apple says you should put a home pot on a solid surface. <laughs> Probably uh, better than. What did you say? <laughs> uh, on books, which you've been putting yeah. on. So I think that that's a good... Yeah. Did you get any white rings on your books? No, but here's the thing. The books made the white ring go away. Like, it wasn't a stain, actually. Like, it was just... I don't know what it was. It was like... it, But the, the ring went away. It's like, vaguely, you can still see it, but I think it vibrated it off or something. Yeah, I can't... I, so there a lot of reasons you get rings on wood furniture, obviously, but... I, Somebody said it's the silicone deliquescing. Ah, uh, of course, the deliquescing. Is that a thing? Or yeah, this is that. Yeah, this. The so the silicone this, rubber awesome. is is uh, <laughs> exuding some sort of oil. Yeah. But it but it might be um, not permanent on the wood. Mm -hmm. And Apple said that it'll go away after a while, and it, and they recommended polishing it with whatever polish your furniture oh, yeah, manufacturer that's, yeah. recommends. That that stuff off there. Um, all right. Don't did, remove the cord from your home pod. No, I did. did you, and and then, I regret it. Do you did you send it back? Or no, I was able to put it back, but now it's a little tilted like that. Mm. And uh, we had Apple geniuses in the studio when I did it. They audibly gasped. Mm. And then um, I, <laughs> and then I said, uh, they said, yeah, we really don't recommend you do that. And then I said, well, um, it. They said, yeah, you see, it doesn't go back very well. You probably should bring it in and get a replacement. But I didn't. It still works. They should say. They said make sure it works fully uh, before you, uh, you know, because you should probably replace that. Mm -hmm. It's thirty five dollars to replace the cable. Oh, it's curiously supple. It is very supple. Um, okay, Apple Repair is accidentally calling nine one one. Yeah. Uh, Sixteen hundred times the <laughs> motherboard says Apple. Twenty watches. times a day they're calling the Elk Grove nine one one. Police department. They say it's the watches. That's what motherboard says. Apple says they're investigating. Yeah, Apple it. doesn't. Know. Somebody suggested that, uh, that uh, this is the Apple official Apple Repair Center that they're getting phones that are locked, and the only way they can test a locked phone is by making an emergency call. Oh. I would think if that's what Apple's doing, they should knock that off right away. There must be a better way to uh, test a phone. Um, so, so motherboard, motherboard, smart. They think it's the watch. Well, Twenty it's calls a day. Easy to call nine one one with the watch. Maybe they're just like, the, are the watches all being thrown in together? Yeah, they might and getting be stacked in such a way that something? same thing with the phone. If you press and squeeze both buttons, yeah. long enough. Well, so you it only could have be to push one button on the phone. On the watch. I mean, yeah, on the watch, yeah. just the the big button on the watch. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. It's a it's a mystery, and even Apple says, "Well, we're in, we don't know. We're investigating." Yeah, we're looking. But at it's it. a big problem for the Elk Grove Police Department, right. the nine one one people, because. It's tying up the lines. And, you know, if, you get a nine, if you're a 911 uh, center and you get a call and there's nobody on the end, you can't just say, oh, miss dial. You have to then listen for a while and then place a call back to that number, leave a voicemail. There's this whole thing. So it takes the operator many minutes to resolve that. Although, after reading that, I found out that actually spurious calls are really common even more so from landlines mm -hmm. that some significant percentage, I forgot what it was. We read it on Twitter on Sunday. I think it was 20 or 30% of all calls to 911 are 
mistakes from landlines, toddlers mashing the buttons and things. So this isn't actually a new problem for 911 call centers. I didn't realize. And coming from the same place, that's new. That's Especially not good. the most, you know, the... Help, I've got a white ring on my furniture. <laughs> uh, so, as you know, I'm very into creating a charging station for... We talked about that on the screensavers. We talked about it on this show. And I asked... We actually send, showed charging stations on the new screensavers. Mm -hmm. couple yeah, weeks check ago. that check that out. It was yeah. two weeks ago. Um, very exciting stuff. Michael sent he tweeted out um, a picture of his charging station, which is absolutely amazing. I think um, I have it on. Let's see, here it is on my screen. If you want to take a look at it. Um, he says his furniture is mid-century modern. Wow, he either has a super big iPhone. <laughs> yeah. So he created on a shelf these little chairs. They look like they, my Dr. Evil chair. <laughs> they, aren't they adorable? And, and the phones sit in the them. A little painting. Um, and he, He's got a little dollhouse for I know, his iPhone. I know, isn't that great? Which actually, this appears to just be a shelf, but... Burke and I have been discussing for know how we are I going to create like this idea. I know we're going to create a dollhouse charging station for all your devices. So we're going to find an old dollhouse. Burke is going to burke it into a uh, charging station. Does Burke or, have nothing to do? When I no. Are we not keeping him busy? He's usually doing. Oh, he does it in no. his spare time at home. Sure. John says that because John's his boss. <laughs> but <laughs> we're really starting to get the impression we're not keeping Burke very busy. I am. Well, uh, usually I come up to him and I'm like, I have this idea. Do you want to do this? And he's no, like, Brick loves yes. doing this, though. Right. So I don't know what doing he's this. doing when I interrupt him from it, but of whatever it Obviously is. Obviously nothing important. It can wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Burke is amazing. This network of would fall apart without him. I, I think know. we, we all know Burke. that. He's get, basically, he's our repair guy, right? I mean, he fixes anything that breaks. We right. need You need somebody like that because you can't be schlepping this stuff back to the repair center all the time. That's where we, Colleen found him many moons Radio ago. Check. check. But no, we brought, we had a, we used to, I used to use an analog mixer and it broke. This is way back. This is cottage days. 2009. Yeah. And uh, it broke. And uh, Colleen found this guy in, I think he was in Daly City, who fixed it at, at some company. And she said, this guy's great. We should hire him. And we did. I thought he was working at Radio Shack. Uh, we'll have to. I don't think it was Radio Shack. Is that Shack. not true? No. Oh. It was maybe some, it was a Radio Shack. It was some shack. official. It was, a, it was an it was actual a shack. Radio shack. Got with it. radios in it. There's Burke. <laughs> we love Burke. He is adept. Uh, yeah, so. And I want doll furniture iPhone <laughs> stands Okay, well, we'll, now. we'll be working on that. Stat. Padre already gave the okay, so that's a future project. What does Padre do around here? <laughs> also a good question. <laughs> Here we I are, you and I, we're I working hard doing shows, and these people are making dollhouse furniture. I know. Goodness gracious. Shocking. All right, so remember last week, we talked about Do Not Disturb. Um, D-N-D. And, and we wanted to figure out how to make groups that we could include in our Do Not Disturb. Remember? So, like, if you just wanted, you, like... This is so, if people are calling you, you know, when you're driving down the road, you can have it say, don't answer calls, unless... Mm -hmm. Either it's in your favorites. There's actually three ways you can somebody can get to you if mm -hmm. you have Do Not Disturb turned on. If you turn on favorites, then then your loved ones can get through. If you allow them to, and I don't, double call. Say, call back if it's urgent, and the second call will go through. You don't allow that? No. Oh, because you get lots of calls. I don't want any calls. And then... <laughs> Haven't we talked about this before? I know not to Don't call you in an emergency. Call me. Uh, <laughs> I'm busy. And then the third one, but we ne we couldn't figure out how to do it, is it says you can create a group that can get through. So right. you figured so, this out now. Well, um, you, ever, the chat room figured it I out. I think during the show we figured it out. Right. You have to do it on your desktop. Mm -hmm. And then Gardner sent us a video. So I'm going to show you what it actually looks like. You have to do it on iCloud on the de desktop. So allow calls. And I made a little um, group. Um, my, me, familia, my family, and then I also made a group of twit peeps. So I'm not going to let them allow. So you could add all your work people, all that's your family, nice. and that's what it's going to look like. So this is using the context grouping feature, but you just don't have that. They took it out of the feature on iOS, uh, out of the context. Right. Let's app play on iOS. Gardner's video there. Let's see he, this. He, he Gardner fellow, if that's his real name. <laughs> Megan and Leo, it's Gardner. On your February 20th show, you guys talked about Do Not Disturb and the use of groups. I thought I'd just give you a quick a video to show you what it does look like when it's all connected up. What I've got here is you're seeing the groups 
on my iPhone on the screen right now. And you see in the middle, we have all allow nighttime calls. And I've added some people to that list that I want to be able to call me at night. Now, when I flip over to my settings app and I look at do not disturb, and then in do not disturb down towards the bottom, we have allow calls from, and you see there it shows up. You can see both some built-in lists and as well the three groups. And there I have allow nighttime calls selected. Just Thank thought I'd uh, pass that along. Thanks so much. Nice. Gardner. Thank you, Gardner. Um, so also Mark wrote in to explain this. Remember how we were like just flabbergasted that you couldn't go to iCloud.com on <laughs> your phone? You had to do it on a desktop and we said, I want to do it. Um, you can. Mark said you could do it through the share sheet. So there... And then I go to, where is this? Oh, request de desktop site. Oh, you have to request site. the desktop site. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And then there I go, iCloud there you on go. that. Which yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense on the iPhone, but on the Sorry iPad, it makes more yeah. sense. I forgot that. that you can always request a desktop site. I never yeah. knew that. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was new to me. Yeah. Um, all right, so. That's good. So now we know how to add the group, and you can even do it on an iOS device, mm -hmm. but you need the desktop iCloud. Um, account login to mm -hmm. do that so that you can add groups and allow nighttime calls. We also had a very interesting question uh, from Mike. He what writes, is the cutoff for nighttime calls, by the way? What do you nine. Think? There was a whole Curb Your Enthusiasm what episode on this. <laughs> nine, you think after, after nine is too late? Mm -hmm. Not 9.30? Nope. Not 10? Nine. Nine. What do you think? Some families it's eight. Nine. I don't want to... You know, it's funny... I, I told Abby, don't call me after eight because I might be asleep. Mm -hmm. I go to bed pretty early mm -hmm. sometimes. What 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 is your night? What is the what is your nighttime Segovia family? What's your nighttime call? How late? How late could somebody call? Eleven. That's because they're young 11. and healthy. Yeah. <laughs> you eat dinner at nine. Oh, they're European. Now I understand. Are you from That's, Barcelona? They're now from LA. I understand. LA oh, LA. It's yeah. like Barcelona. Mm -hmm. It's the Barcelona of California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mike writes, while enjoying the winter carnival in St. Paul, Minnesota, just before the Super Bowl, my wife and I were taking iPhone, iPhone photos of the Ice Palace and sculptures. <gasps> it was a cool 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and our Fun. iPhones both decided it was too cold yeah. being exposed for about 10 minutes and shut down. After warm-up, they were started and I signed in, but I wondered, as I shivered, entering my password, would an iPhone 10 recognize me and sign me in while my hand was shivering? I think Mike also gave us some pictures of the Ooh, Ice Palace. Ooh, pretty. No, doesn't it make you feel cold? I have never uh, been anywhere cold enough to shut an iPhone down. I've been to places hot enough to shut an iPhone down. I have. In uh, you know, We go to Bozeman, Montana, Montana every yeah. winter, and it is often cold. It would sign me. It, I did have my iPhone 10. It would Still sometimes works. shut in, but it's but the problem face is you want to be covering your face because it's so cold. Oh, and so then you have to lift your you have balaclava. To go, like, yeah, exactly. It's a balaclava problem. You um, just wouldn't understand. The iPhone 10 is designed to work at temperatures between 32 degrees and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Freezing and hot, 95. Mm -hmm. And that, but it only really happens to me if I'm in a car and I leave it in the uh, sun. Then it'll it'll mm -hmm. it'll say no no I'm too hot I'm gonna have to turn that happens off. yeah that yeah, happens that's just to protect the processor and the circuitry you don't want it to be too hot or too mm -hmm. cold now is the time for us to wear hats <gasps> well you know who picked these hats these are very special hats picked by uh, Zarian who is here with his mom and dad mm -hmm. they're from L A you know yes and um, uh, you know it's interesting you should pick this hat Zarian this is a Los Angeles Police Department's hat. It's a tech squad hat. So if you ever if you're ever in a riot in Los Angeles, this is a good thing to have, except I can't fasten it, which is probably also a good thing. Yeah. About that. You know, this was brought to me by uh, somebody from the LAPD who's in the <laughs> I guess in the tax squad. And I guess maybe he was formerly of the tax squad. Mine is from South Sydney. Oh, I lost we my strap. Who the bunnies were last time, but I forgot already. Always know where your strap is. Don't lose your strap. So we're wearing caps because this is our app cap segment where we talk about a favorite app that we've been using. Yes. We've talked about that this whole show practically, but this is a new one. Shall I wait? Till I get yeah. my helmet on? Yeah. I think, well, maybe. Depends on the app. 
Okay. Mine is Alto's Odyssey. Oh, yeah. I definitely need a helmet for that. Yes, you do. You do. You have to buy one. I mean, not with real money, but with points. Um, it's from Team Alto. You probably remember Alto's Adventure that was a few years ago. Um, this is Alto's Odyssey. Instead of skiing or snowboarding, you're sandboarding. Oh. And just You've traveled 3.1 miles. I've gone pretty far. I've played... Um, oh, you wondered what Berg did. This He also... Um, he played <laughs> this game for me. So I'm very advanced. He wanted to advance it. This is on the Apple TV. If you buy it, you buy it once, you can buy it on the Apple TV. Oh, listen to the swoosh yeah. sound from the sand. That's neat. And the, um, so I have to jump over Oh, you're playing this in the Apple TV? I am. So I'm using the Apple TV remote. It's the first... The first time oh, I've seen... Oh, look out for that I rock. It last very long in that one. Don't hit the rocks. I was obviously just showing you. This is perfect for the remote control in the Apple TV. Mm -hmm. It's the... Because you just swipe left, right, right? Or right. up, down? What, what? You don't do anything. You don't just, do anything. Except for press the button to jump over That's rocks, all you which do. Which I forgot to do. We'll and flip. And so you have to, you know, there's a little physics involved. If you're going to do a flip, you got to start How right do you away flip? in here. I'll hold. Get all oh, the way just over. You just hold it? Oh. Yeah. Nice so flip. I'm gonna, and you got to collect all the things. you got to jump up and you do tricks like backflips or you get, um, I'm going to bounce off that balloon. Mm. Boing. And bounce. Oh, Boing. again. Um, so there's this also looks fun. A beautiful so soundtrack. Ooh. Oh, don't crashed. worry. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Is this a relaxing game? Um, I do you want to relax? Because let's I'll show you the Zen mode. Let me show you the Zen. I feel zen. like this could be stressful or relaxing. Well, yeah, I mean it I think it's relaxing, but um so here's Zen mode here. So it becomes night. You um, have this to catch mode. lemurs. Lemurs? Yeah. Or, yes. In uh, Alta's adventure, it was llamas, but now it's lemurs. And I have something very exciting to you, tell you, Leo. Now, are you playing the Zen mode or the regular mode? Regular Zen mode. So I'm not going to die no matter what happens. Oh, but that's the only difference? Yeah. And you don't collect coins. You don't die. There's, there's no to race. Gain. You don't. There's no. It's just. And what's the kite following you for? Is that's that a just, bird. Oh, that's a bird. A desert bird. And you can jump up on the balloons, and um, it's quite a wonderful game. You she get looks better sad. and better. Is Alto a he or a she? Uh, well, uh, Alto I think starts as a he, but then apparently I have different characters because Burke's been playing this all night long, <laughs> and he now I have different <laughs> characters, and um, I don't want to reset my progress. No. Let's see. No. Well, let's go to the workshop. Oh, you so can you get can a helmet. So you can buy a helmet. This is not real money. It's just coins Chasm that you Chasm reduce, collect. magnet time. Oh, neat. Mysterious radio. Oh, I'd love a wingsuit. You can get a sandboard. Wow. So iPhone, Oh, this iPad, looks fun. How much? Four ninety nine for iPhone, iPad, uh, Apple TV. You buy once. One and all. Of them. I'm going to get this. Done. I like this. And I have, I have good news for you. I had Alto's Adventure, so... Yeah. Next yeah. week, one of the developers of Alto's Odyssey is going to come speak to us about no. the creation. Yes. Oh, that'll be fun on this yeah, show? on this show. Oh, that's it great. It took three years. So he's going to um, come and tell that's us about his work. toiled and why he did the things we did. I just... I don't love Endless Runner games, but I really love this one. Like, I found that this um, is very soothing. My boys really liked it. Before I got to this level, I actually recorded Milo um, doing some because I thought, oh, I could never get to. Is he that. really good at it? He is really good. Yeah. So, yeah, I recorded his because I thought I would mess up. And so. Um, here's here's yeah, Milo. Is, yeah, the very beginning of the game. This is, this what, is what a, a good player looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is what a good good 12 year old who has um, different, uh, I guess, dexterity. Spends a they lot grew of time. up with this, they know how to yeah. use this stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So wow, there's a lot I like of cool. The lightning. Yeah, the design is beautiful. It's very um, reminds me a lot of um, the game. What's the the pyramid game? What are they thinking? Journey. No, the one that was so popular. What am I thinking? Oh, of? I the, where you turn around uh, the yeah. pyramids and it was like yeah. Escher like. Yeah, that was fun. Monument Valley. Monument Valley. Yeah. I mean, it's not the gameplay is very different than Monument Valley, but the graphics. This is a whole uh, category of apps. I think the beautiful iOS apps mm -hmm. category. I don't know. But there's, you're right, it's very much, there. there's a certain, they all have beautiful music, mm -hmm. uh, great graphics, uh, they're native to the UI, which is something I really lobby for, That and it's why a lot of games that are brought over from other platforms don't work as well, I think, on iOS. You really have to understand that it's for touch, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not uh, you know.
Which is why I am such a fan of my app, Cap. Okay, let's see yours. <laughs> this is so not for touch. <laughs> it couldn't be less for touch. Uh, this is this is really the antithesis of an iPad app. It's called Blink. And what I like about it, by the way, is it supports uh, Face ID. It is a command line terminal program for iOS. <laughs> Uh, everything you do, you have to type. Um, it's really for people who have logins to other computers. So if you're a sysadmin, uh, if you run a shop, it's a real saving for me because there are things you can't do on an iMac, like run Emacs or Vim, but but you might want to do, and now you can. This is actually the best terminal uh, terminal emulator for iOS. It works on the iPhone too, which is kind of cool, although. A little harder to type on the iPhone uh, than it is uh, on an iPad. But with, if you have an iPad like I do with a with a command with a uh, keyboard, keyboard, now you really have. Notice, by the way, they have the additional keys that you don't find on the Apple keyboard, like Escape, available here. Uh, you could turn that on or off, and it, the configuration is as appropriate from the command line. You could store your SSH keys in here, as I have, and what that does is it means you. You know, if you set up an SSH server uh, so that you don't use a password, this is a much more secure way to log into it. I know people are going, what is he talking about? It has a variety of, uh, of different uh, themes. You could do WWDC, Solarized. Could you make it pink? You could. Okay. And it comes with some very nice um, fonts for, you have to use uh, mono... Uh, you know, uh, fixed with fonts. It comes with my favorite Fira code, which I really like, but is also Source Code Pro and Menlo and Courier. You can change the font size. I, I like to have a fairly big font size, uh, but on the phone, you might want to have a smaller size and so forth. Um, you could hook your phone up to an external keyboard pretty easily and yeah. you really needed to... This is this is for me... Uh, well, I'll, 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 for instance, and, and by the way, it supports not only SSH, but my favorite uh, secure... Uh, enter entering thing mosh which is great for mosh is useful for um, uh, mobile because i'm just going to log into my minecraft server here mosh is great for mobile oh i have to do it manually because i don't think i entered it in this by the way it saves the keys and the logins and everything to icloud so you could figure it once and it'll be configured on all your ios devices leo at don't uh don't uh, pay too much attention to this. That's all right. You can. Laporte.network. This is going to log me into. Oh, now, don't pay attention to this because I need a key password. Wouldn't want anyone in your Minecraft server. Yeah, this is for my Minecraft server, but it's also a Debian server. And so I'm logged into it now. Uh, it supports Tmux. Uh, it supports automated uh, logins. You can show it. You can show it now. So now I'm no longer on my iPad. I'm on, uh, in fact, I can go over to my Minecraft server. Let's, let's just see if anybody's playing the uh, Minecraft. Uh, let's see. I left the game recently. Uh, let's see if there's another. This is another server and another server and another server. And so these are various servers running. I can stop the server. I can restart the server. Um, this, is, this is a command line logged into a computer in my house. Um, I could even run if I wanted to. I think I have Emacs on here. Let me just see. I could run, uh, yeah. So I can run uh, Emacs. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd ever want to run Emacs on your iPad? No, probably not. But you can. That's the point. You could if you wanted to. What could I do on that? Nothing. It's not for you. This okay. is this is this is not for you. But but uh, it fair. is it is very handy for people. I need to get in. This build is outdated. All right. Looks like. Oh. So that's one of my next tasks. And I can do it from my iPad, which is handy. I can rebuild my uh, my server and, and so forth. Uh, and it looks like I need to do that uh, in just a bit. So very handy. Uh, it is a very limited um, program. It's not for everybody. It's also expensive. It's $20. Uh, but it's an open source project. You can find out more at blink.sh. It is a... I've tried a number of terminals on iOS... Uh, and this is really the one. So if for some reason, this is really geeky, but if for some reason you want a terminal, um, you know, and I could do Python programming on here because I'm, because I'm logged in to a, um, a real uh, server, 
I could I could do anything I could do. You, you're not going to get a GUI, but I could do anything I could do in the command line. So if I want to run Python, now I'm in Python. So there's so that's kind of that's kind of handy. So if you this came up because uh, on a Twig on Wednesday, Kevin Toffel was talking about how he was using a Chromebook and he couldn't and he wanted to do some programming, but he couldn't on his Chromebook. But he figured out how he could log into a Raspberry Pi. Well, you could do exactly the same thing if you wanted on iOS as well. Log in, do any kind of programming you want. It's not for GUI. It's command line only. But if you know what a command line is and you like a command line, then you should definitely take a look at Blink. Blink.sh. Not cheap, 20 bucks, but I decided I wanted to pay for it to su support development. Makes sense. <sighs> there you have it. There you do. We've, we've done it. iOS Today records every Tuesday at 9-ish a.m. Pacific. Yep. Noon Eastern. That would be uh, 1700 UTC. Although, in a, soon... Well, in a couple of months, we're going to go uh, back. Aren't we going to daylight savings time? Is it in uh, April? Saving. Saving. Is it in April? I think it is. I thought it was March. I don't know. Soon. We're, we're going to spring forward. I feel like I saw that uh, on my calendar, on my Fantastic yeah. L. That pretty soon we're going to spring so forward. Spring when forward we do, soon. you should just understand, we change. UTC does not. Mm. But we change. March 11th. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not far off. No, it's not. It's less not. than two weeks. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? No. It's winter just went by like that. It's still wintry outside. It's, it's freezing in yeah, Petaluma. It's like 50 degrees outside. It's actually, you know, people are laughing at us. <laughs> they are. But this morning, it was, when I woke up, it was 38 degrees outside. Feels like 32. That's actual cold weather. Mm -hmm. But your iPhone did not stop working. No, I was inside. I wouldn't go out there in that kind of weather. <laughs> freeze your nose off. You can get our podcast. You can watch it. You can listen to it. You can watch... And listen to it on whatever podcast catcher you have. You can watch on YouTube. You can ask your your home pod. You can also play the flash briefing, which is just a little bit of all of our shows, which is very exciting. Yeah, add us to your flash briefing. If you go, if you use your uh, Echo app uh, on your phone, you can. I can't get this off. I'm going to be wearing it for the rest of the day. I think last time I wore that, it suffocated. It's and very hard to get it off. <laughs> but you don't want it to fall off in the middle of a riot. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can. <laughs> Uh, what were we saying? Uh, flash briefing. Flash briefing. You can add us to your flash briefing by going to your Echo app. Go to the flash briefing section and search for Twit. And what's nice is you get a little bit of, of all the different shows throughout mm -hmm. the uh, week. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. And we will see you. This was a fun one. We'll see you next time on iOS Today. Bye-bye.